like to say, you know, hey, the book is out on fields and everything like that. But it's on a good coaching staff to know that, hey, if this is my player's weakness, right, we need to devise a game plan that attacks the strength. So absolutely like the Lions game. And this is me and Paulie have been making this point for weeks at this point. With Tyson Bajit, you see just a completely different concept. You see a lot yes. of heavy run game. You see a lot of bootleg play action levels concepts where we talk about taking layups, taking dinks and dunks. When Lou gets, he gets Justin Fields back in there, he goes, all right, Aaron Rodgers, West Coast time again, but with some option plays and some RPOs and maybe some QB runs. Lou gets, he gets Justin Fields back, and he just goes back to his old shenanigans that he feels like Justin Fields should be able to execute by now. Whereas, like, with Tyson Bajan, I felt like he simplified, played to his strengths, things like that. And I think yesterday was the first time that we watched a game where I liked seeing Deontay Foreman get to run the hell out of the ball while Justin Fields is also in the game. So, like, you're attacking you're attacking teams in, in ways that, at the end of the day, to me, is just terrible, terrible coaching. I mean, when you see Luke Getze get put in a box, the, the withering – the way he withers at the end of the game when he played against Minnesota or Tampa so and he just couldn't figure it out. It's just, it's so painful to watch a guy just go, I, I don't know. I got nothing else. I got nothing left. And I think that's why to the nuance of it is like, I think the thing that just makes the most sense, the value and Brian Poles has preached value forever. And is Justin Fields the value choice or is a first overall pick with a five-year contract, the value choice. So, so do you feel like if we're just following the model of value, mm -hmm. which Ryan Poles has been at least pretty consistent on doing things through value, even overpaying for a defensive end, which I was not a fan of the Montez Sweat trade, totally eating my words. I totally see the value in it three, four weeks later already. Um, paying for a defensive end, that's a value position. Paying for a cornerback right. potentially should be a value position that you overpay for. Um, where do you see, just applying the logic of Ryan Poles, what is the value move at the quarterback position moving forward? I honestly couldn't tell you because yeah. we're not in the coaching room. To your exact point, you'd said all this earlier. I actually think there's a common thread when we look at what's going on with Luke Getze, right? Because Luke Getze, we got to give him his flowers. He seems to start every game with a nearly idealized attack. That script that they come up with rules and somebody has to get credit for it last year the bears were the number one team in scoring opening drives right throughout the 2022 season and they do and i mean go back to tampa what did what did the bears expect to happen they expected to get the snot blitzed out of them so they basically set up a bunch of semi-condensed formations and then hot dropped a bunch of people behind, into protection so that they could pick up all the blitzes that Tampa threw at them. Suddenly, Field sees a clearer field because instead of seven in coverage, there's five, finds DJ Moore in the flat, he races up the sidelines, and what do you know? The Bears are in the end zone. They have a habit of doing that, right? You give Fields a crease, he will run for minimum five yards. You give Fields a lot of space to throw into via a blitz, like you take guys out of coverage, Fields can find that guy who has crazy separation. There's a reason Fields kills the blitz. It's not because he's getting the ball out fast. It's because, honest to God, Luke Getze actually does a decent job of allowing the protection scheme, the freedom to pick blitzes up, and they do it more than I've seen a lot of teams. And if you need any proof, watch the Bears' defense. Their blitzes are killing teams right now. Like picking up blitzes is hard. The bears seem as if they are really struggling when teams just shift to seven drop zone. And there's one team that just doesn't do that. I couldn't tell you why the lions refuse to do it. A lot of defensive coordinator seem as if they follow the motto of we do what we do because we do it. And that's, or, and that's how we operate. They stay from their head coach down. Stems from the head coach down. We're right. We're and tough. We're tough. We're going to smash you in the mouth. Play exactly. man to man. And while I respect the idea, it has meant that, like you're talking about, Dave, Luke Getze's offense actually looks like it kind of works against a team that's running mostly man. So I can't help but look at a team, a game like Minnesota. Minnesota right now is, if you will, my like circled example of this. You could tell Fields and Getze don't get along. What does the front office think? Like, who do they think has the, the point? You know what I mean? We don't, we aren't in these meeting rooms. 
So do they feel as if they have better answers? You've seen it in the Minnesota game. I actually thought their passing attack had answers, but like you're talking about, Dave, are they Justin Fields' answers? Are they, can Justin Fields' way he plays football fit into an attack that's going up against zone? Or do you have to hit those dink and dunk creases and have playmakers that are going to account for this? We're not going to know because we get, Justin Fields out of the moment. And Justin Fields is an extremely smart player that once he's seen the tape can articulate very clearly exactly what he should have done at times. And it makes it weird because this ultimately comes down to what does Fields do and how does Fields operate within the critical three seconds he needs to make a play. And I'm not going to obsess over it. I'm kind of done obsessing over it. I would argue that we know what Fields is. He's going to be a barrel of fun, especially as we roll into a team or a series of teams where the Bears defense should give the Bears offense surprisingly good field position. And all the Bears offense has to do is capitalize on some of their opportunities. And more than likely, they'll roll to a bunch of wins. What does what do the Bears do at quarterback? I mean, I have what I think is my preferred option, but ultimately you're not going to hear it here. Cause I'm going to leave it to Ryan Poles. Like I've thought this in the back of my head, not necessarily maybe articulated it as well is that, like we said, we all thought Matt Eberflus was a joke and needed to go. And now all of a sudden the guy honestly looks like a genius. And even when you hear things like Montez Sweat saying, I love playing for this guy. I love playing. Like, I think he's a, a genius and I love his passion and this and that. We don't know because we could be thinking that Luke Getzey is an absolute buffoon and everyone in the room is thinking, well, Fields really needs to hit these throws because Luke's right. putting them in a position that we think or we see is successful. And I think the only breadcrumbs that you get off of this is when you watch a Tyson Bajan start. And what is Luke Getzey seeing? What is Luke Getzey doing differently with Tyson Bajan? And does Luke Getzey, or yeah, does Luke Getzey, if he keeps his job and everybody thinks that he's the genius here and Fields is the, is the problem, do you need to draft a first overall or a second overall pick or can you get a Bajan in the third round and just have him sit there for three or four years? Like all this is unknown. Personally, I've never seen an offensive coordinator who is supposed to be a genius. And even if he is a genius on some level and to somebody in that room, you got to be able to be- adjust better than that. I feel like that's what it comes down to is adjustments. I, I feel like you said they get a hot start, but you, the problem is failure to adjust. And David, with you talking about value, when we look at the value of the situation, um, it's a lot easier to replace an offensive coordinator than it is a quarterback, right? So a lot, easier. Uh, a lot easier. And when you look at the whole thing overall, though, the the reason why I feel better about it is because in you know against the Tampa Bay game early on, there was plenty of blame to go around. You could blame you know put blame on the defense, put blame on Justin Fields, put blame on the play calling. And I felt like there's blame all around for a while, but not anymore. Now the defense is playing good. Now Justin Fields is taking steps forward. And I feel like we're starting to find exactly what the weak link here is. And if we go into the off season with at least, you know, not if we go into the off season, not confused about our situation, then that's a lot easier of a fix especially value-wise, moving forward, you can sit there and say, well, okay, we figured out that if we could just get a better play caller. And like you, like you said, Robert, we know what Justin Fields is. Uh, to be honest with you, this isn't the time for developing anymore. Like, you're in the NFL, you're three. You don't get much more of an opportunity than that. And, you know, the only reason Fields has got it is based off his physical skill set and his draft status. Like, you – need to make the most of your opportunities and you're getting into a part of your career here where listen if, if you can't make these dump off throws accurately by now I'd, i you can hope that sure you still develop your game a little bit better and get better at that however we know what you're good at so we need to devise a game plan towards what you're good at not right. towards what we hope you get better at it's the complex relationship between do you do you use your play calling to challenge a player to grow. Best example I could possibly give you, the Bears have nearly never given Darnell Wright chip help unless they thought the dar- or the edge rusher across from him was amazing. They have from day one never offered him chip help because that's not his job. His job is to be a top 10 pick playing tackle, to be on his own, to be the island guy so that you can chip the left tackle Braxton Jones's man and keep everything in check. 
it, it kind of worked. Like, yeah, you had some rough weeks going forward, but by giving Darnell Wright the whole enchilada up front, you basically allowed him to struggle and then improve. Tyreek Stevenson, same thing. They never really offered him a ton of help out there. But slowly but surely, as, as he took his licks, he's gotten better. So do you handcuff yourself to what Justin Fields has shown you that he is confident in, or do you push the envelope? 